Howdy folks, it's Will here from Flow Mountain Bike and this is one of the best handling hardtails I have ever tested. This is the brand new Cannondale Scalpel HT. Now the Scalpel HT is all new for 2022. It replaces the outgoing FSI as Cannondale's lightweight cross-country hardtail. It gets a full carbon fiber frame with drop seat stays and leaf spring style chain stays to maximize rear end compliance. It's fitted with either a 100 or 110 millimeter travel fork and Cannondale has built in clearance for up to 2.4 inch tires. Geometry on the Scalpel HT is similarly progressive. Our test bike has a 100 mil travel fork and a 67 degree head angle but with a 110 millimeter travel fork, that slackens out to 66.5 degrees. To put that number into perspective, it's about two to three degrees slacker than most cross country hardtails on the market. We've also got a steep 75 degree seat tube angle, a generous 62 millimeter bottom bracket drop, and on the medium size, I've been testing a 430 millimeter reach. Now that does sound a little short on paper, but on the trail, when the fork sags into its travel, the reach measurement does actually get a bit longer. We're also stoked to see size specific chain stays on the Scalpel HT. And Cannondale calls this proportional response geometry, and it sees the rear center length growing by five millimeters as you go up each frame size. The medium size here has a 435 mil rear center, but that goes up to 445 millimeters on the extra large. For 2022, there are three Cannondale Scalpel HT models in the Australian lineup. The bike we've been testing here sits in the middle of the range. This is the Cannondale Scalpel HT Carbon 3, and current price on this bike is 4,799 Australian dollars. It's specced with a RockShox SID Select Plus fork, a Shimano SLX drivetrain with Cannondale forged alloy crank arms and a slick one-piece chainring, the Shimano Dior two-piston brakes, a custom wheel set with Dior hubs laced to stands, no tubes, crest MK4 rims, and a Schwab 2.25 inch tires with a racing ray on the front and a racing Ralph on the rear. Confirmed weight for our Cannondale Scalpel HT test bike is 10.6 kilograms. Now that's with the tire set up tubeless and weighed without pedals. It's worth noting here that while all of the Scalpel HT models use a carbon frame with the same geometry and the same molds, the top end model, which is the Scalpel HT High Mod, does employ higher modulus carbon fiber, and that comes with a claimed frame weight of just 895 grams. The standard carbon frame, which is featured on our test bike here, is a little heavier, though it's still no slouch with a claimed frame weight of 1,075 grams. While the frame is impressively light, the stock wheels are not. These tip the scales at 1,934 grams, which is pretty porky for a cross-country bike. Thanks to the expertly tuned carbon chassis and slender seat post, the Scalpel HT is quite comfortable, which has been appreciated on some of the longer exploratory rides I've taken it on. While that comfort and the low weight are certainly nice, it's really the geometry and the handling that sets the Scalpel HT apart on the trail. The slack front end, wide bars and low hanging bottom bracket deliver a surprisingly confidence inspiring ride quality on rough descents, especially when you're off the brakes and going absolutely flat out. And when you roll through steep G outs, there's less of that classic over the bars sensation thanks to the front hub sticking out much further ahead of you. Despite the long wheelbase though, the Scalpel HT still manages to retain the sharp ride quality that you want from a carbon hardtail. It does require a little more commitment when angulating into tighter corners, but learn to push that inside grip down and the Scalpel HT rewards you with a predictable and precise arc through every turn. That steering accuracy is especially noticeable compared to a full suspension XC bike. You get better feedback from the tires when riding through soft sand, mud and loose powdery dust, and that allows you to make rapid micro adjustments to your weight distribution in order to stay on top of traction. Still, it's not so stiff as to rattle your teeth out. There's sufficient flex through the chassis that allows the wheels to track smoothly without pinballing around on rockier sections of trail, and that allows you to commit to your line with fewer consequences. As for what I didn't like about the Scalpel HT, while it does provide a compliant ride with that slender carbon seat post, I just really wish it came with a dropper. This is no doubt the most competent XC hardtail I've ridden, 
but I wasn't able to get anywhere near its full descending potential while high posting. While I would have loved to have tried this bike with a dropper post, because it uses a 27.2 millimeter diameter, I didn't have any spares in the workshop. And while there are more 27.2 dropper posts on the market these days, they're still less common compared to droppers that use a 30.9 or 31.6 mil diameter. Also, I think the stock 2.25 inch Schwalb tires are too narrow. Partway through the test period, I tried out a set of 2.4 inch Maxxis wide trail tires with a recon race on the front and an Aspen on the rear. Even though the 25 millimeter rim width is on the narrow end of the recommended range, they set up well and they provided a big improvement in both grip and damping. I also tried out the Scalpel HT with the DT Swiss XRC 1501 wheel set, which I've been testing separately. Those wheels dropped nearly 400 grams of weight off this bike, boosting both acceleration and handling response. If you wanna know more about those wheels, check out the separate review over at flowmountainbike.com. Now overall, I wouldn't exactly say this bike is bristling with value, and it also wasn't entirely problem free. The headset ceiling doesn't seem to be particularly robust, with the bearings already starting to feel a bit rumbly after a couple of months of testing. I didn't have any issues with the PF30 bottom bracket, but it's worth acknowledging that it is one of the less appealing standards out there. And I'm also not totally sold on the speed release dropouts and the accompanying through axle. Even after a bit of practice, I still found them to be not so speedy when trying to remove and install the rear wheel. Everything else has performed pretty well. The Shimano Dior brakes are absolutely fine, though the bite point isn't quite as positive as the higher end SLX and XT brakes, with a slightly wooden lever feel, which probably isn't helped by the cheap stamped rotors. Shift performance has been great, though the flashy XT mech does seem a little unnecessary. I'd much rather Cannondale spec an SLX derailleur and upgrade the shifter to an XT unit in order to get that double upshift function. Speaking of the drivetrain, the Scalpel HT has adopted the newer 55mm chainline standard. While shift performance has been fine, it does mean that the chain ends up on a pretty hefty angle in that 51 tooth sprocket, and the chain would actually fall down the cassette on the rare occasion that I would need to backpedal on the trail. Now Cannondale has gotten around this previously by using its AI offset, and that sees the rear hub and cassette offset to the drive side by three millimeters in order to line it up with the wider chainring placement. To compensate, the rear rim is then dished back towards the non-drive side by three millimeters. You'll find that AI offset used on the latest Scalpel full suspension bike and the Jekyll, but Cannondale has decided not to use it for the Scalpel HT. The advantage is that it will accommodate any standard 29er boost wheel set, which is something that will appeal to privateer racers, and it also meant I could test that DT Swiss wheel set on this bike without having to re-dish the rear rim. It's also worth noting that you'll find that same 55 mm chainline standard on the new Scott Spark, the Trek Top Fuel, and the Giant Anthem. Of course, Shimano and SRAM are both supporting the standard, so perhaps I'm just being a little pedantic here. Still, it feels like Cannondale had a solution to this issue with the AI offset, so it's a bit of a shame not to see it on the Scalpel HT. As for the competition, well, I've also spent a load of time on the latest Canyon Exceed, which is a close competitor to the Scalpel HT. However, while there are some similarities between these two bikes, the ride quality is very different on the trail. Now you can check out a detailed comparison between these two bikes in the full review. Just make sure you click that link in the video description below. And that folks brings us to the verdict of the new Cannondale Scalpel HT. With its sculpted carbon chassis and its contemporary geometry, the Cannondale Scalpel HT stands as one of the best handling XC bikes currently on the market. The proportional response design makes a load of sense, and while Cannondale isn't the first brand to offer size-specific chainstays, it's still not as common as it should be. Combined with its slack head angle, the wide handlebars, and the low bottom bracket, the Scalpel HT offers excellent weight distribution with a calm and comfortable demeanor over rough terrain. But while Cannondale has pushed the envelope in some areas, the Scalpel HT feels a little restrained in others. I'd really like to see Cannondale commit to its futuristic hardtail concept by fitting a dropper post as standard, and it's also crying out for some high volume rubber to make the most of its generous clearance. Indeed, there is plenty of potential to be unlocked from this forward-thinking hardtail. Fitting bigger tires delivered significant improvements to our test bike, and it's an upgrade I'd wholeheartedly recommend to any Scalpel HT owners out there. 
Add in the option to fit a 110mm travel fork, and you've got yourself a surprisingly versatile XC bike with superb geometry and a well-tuned carbon frame. Now there is a ton more information about our experience of testing the Scalpel HT in the full review over at flowmountainbike.com. Make sure you hit that link in the video description below right now, and that will take you through to the detailed review of this bike right here. If you've got any questions for me about the new Scalpel HT, drop those into the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Tooroo!